In this section, we're going to talk about how to take your source code for your service and we're going to version it. And there's a few different patterns or options that are available for you for updating your code within a cluster. So let's compare and contrast these three different mechanisms here. The first mechanism is delete and upload. What I show here on the left is a cluster, and in the cluster it's running version six instances of version one of your code. And now you have version two of your code ready to go. So one option that you have available to you is you could go to the orchestrator and you could tell it to go and bring down all six of these service instances so they all just go away. And then you can tell it to deploy a whole new six set of instances that are now version two. Now, of course, the downside of this is that there is some moment in time, or really a few moments in time, where you have no instances of your service running at all. So any client request that might be trying to hit these service instances, let's say through a load balancer, they're not going to get any response back because you have nothing running. So this is a pretty inexpensive way to go. Um, it's an easy to do a wholesale change from V1 to V2. I'll talk a little bit more about that wholesale change later on. But it does have this downside of there's some downtime to any clients that are trying to hit the service. On the other hand, if these services are behind a message queue, then it really isn't a problem. I could bring down all six of them, so now messages are being queued up, and the queue is growing, the queue length is growing, uh, but those messages are not being dropped by the queue. As long as we deploy version two before those messages time to live expires in the queue, then these will eventually come up and they will start pulling messages off the queue and everything is fine. So you have to think about how these services are interacting with other services to know how useful this option is for you. The second service update option is what's called a rolling update. In this scenario, I have a cluster and it's got six instances of your code running version one. But instead of bringing all six instances down at once, we'll bring down a couple of the instances and then bring them up as version two, then bring down the next two instances, bring up version two, then bring down the last two instances and bring up version two. And this is called a rolling upgrade because you're kind of rolling through the instances and you're bringing down V1 and bringing up V2. Now, immediately, I would think you could see one of the big advantages here is that at no point do you have nothing running, right? At any given point in time, you have some instances, in this case, you had at least four out of six of the instances that were up and running handling client requests. So you were perhaps running at reduced scale for some of that time, but you were never completely down for that time. And that's one of the nice things about a rolling upgrade. But there is something dangerous about a rolling upgrade or update, and that is, is that within the cluster, you have version one and version two instances running simultaneously. And some client requests may go to version one, some client requests may go to version two, and you have to, there may be some additional things you have to th deal with when working with that. I have some special slides that talk about that scenario in more detail that are coming up shortly. Let's now turn our attention to the third update option that we have available, and this is frequently referred to as blue-green deployments. Now here I have a single cluster, although this scenario also works for across clusters. If you have two clusters, you can use it here too. But let's just for right now say it's a single cluster, and we have this reverse proxy or a load balancer that's in the cluster, and it is directing all the traffic to these six instances of your service that's running version one. Now within this cluster, we can go and create six new instances that are running version two. Now, after we get these up and running, we can then talk to the reverse proxy or load balancer here, and we can configure it to do what's called a controlled migration, where we can say to the reverse proxy, send some amount of traffic, let's say 90% to version one, and let's just send 10% of the traffic to version two. And then you can run like that for a little while. So now 10% of your customers are hitting the V2 code base, and you can see if any customers are complaining or they're happy with the V2 code base. If any of the customers are unhappy with the V2 code base, then you can tell the reverse proxy to send all the traffic back to V1, and then you can bring down all the V2 instances, fix them, and then deploy V3 instances within the cluster. 
So then if the 10% is doing well, then you could maybe change it to 20% or going to V2, and then maybe 50% V2, and then ultimately over time, slowly make it so that you get 100% of the traffic going to V2, none of the traffic going to V1, and then you can bring down the V1 instances. There's another um, modification of this scenario, which is frequently called a VIP swap. That stands for virtual IP address swapping, where this reverse proxy or load balancer is sending all the traffic to V1, then you bring up V2, and basically you're just saying to the reverse proxy, just send all the traffic immediately over to V2, and then none of the traffic to V1. So instead of controlling the migration from V1 to V2, you're just having it go in one fell swoop. Um, and again, this could be done across clusters. So you could create one cluster that's got V1 in it, another cluster that has V2 in it, and then the reverse proxy can be sending traffic to some of it to V1 and some of it to the V2 and running in this other cluster. Um, so those are the three different service update options we have available. On this slide here, I have a table that compares and contrasts these three different options. Let's walk through it. So the first feature is additional hardware costs. Delete and the upload option has no additional hardware costs. You're bringing down your six instances and then you're bringing them back up with new code. So it's the same six instances you have before. And in fact, it's a little bit of a savings because you might not be charged with the VMs for the small period of time that they are down. For the rolling upgrade, there's no additional hardware costs because you're bringing down two instances with V1, bringing up two instances with V2, and then you're rolling this across. So you're really just using the same six instances of the hardware, you're just bringing down V1 code and bringing up V2 code. The blue-green deployment scenario has additional hardware costs involved, though, because I didn't bring down the V1 code, I brought the V2 code up in addition to the V1. So there was a period of time where I had 12 instances that I was paying for. Now, once I talk to the reverse proxy and I send all the traffic over to V2, then, of course, I can bring down all the V1 instances and then I'm not paying for them anymore. But there's a period of time where my hardware cost is higher. Let's talk about service availability. With the delete and upload option, there is some downtime. You brought all the instances down, client requests can't get in. With the rolling update option, there's some period of time where there's reduced scale. As you bring down two instances, then there's only four instances that can handle traffic, and then we bring the two instances up with V2. With the blue-green deployment, the service availability is unaffected because we're bringing up new instances, and so we had the original six still there, and in fact now we even have another six that are there. And if you're doing controlled migration, in a sense you have, while it's not zero and 100%, you have 12 instances that are handling the load. Um, of course, you don't have to bring up 12, uh, you know, six and six, right? You can bring up a couple of V2 instances and then test that traffic. And then you can bring up a few more before you move the percentage bar over on the reverse proxy. And then you can bring down some of, some of the V1 instances, but not all of them. So you can control costs along with the reverse proxy and how much percentage of traffic it's migrating between the two uh, versions within the cluster or across clusters. Uh, let's talk now about the failed update recovery. What if you now are bringing up V2 instances, but they're buggy and they're crashing, right? That, it certainly does happen where the V2 code has is, you know, more bugs in it than the V1 code. It maybe has some regressions in it. Well, in the delete and up case scenario, upload scenario, you're going to have downtime on your service until you redeploy V1. Right, so you brought down V1, you now bring up V2, V2's crashing and not doing a good job, so now you're gonna bring down V2 and you're gonna bring back up V1. So there's gonna be more downtime that you're experienced there. With a rolling update scenario, when you start rolling up V2, if you start seeing crashes right away, you can usually start doing what's called a rollback and the orchestrator will start putting V1 instances back in. So you really just have some reduced scale, but there was never fully any complete downtime. Some customers may have gotten bitten by the V2 bugs, but other customers, you know, that's hopefully short-lived, and then you're back to V1 everywhere within the cluster, and everything's running back. Then you can go fix your code and deploy V3. With the blue-green deployment, 
if you see that V2 is having problems, then you can go to the reverse proxy and just say, look, send all the traffic back to V1. Then you can bring down the V2 instances, fix the bugs, and bring up the V3 instances, which hopefully fix the bugs, and then start migrating the traffic again. V2 testability. In an ideal world, people would like to have V1 up and running and maybe deploy some V2s and then just test it. So can we have V1 running and be testing V2 at the same time? Well, with the delete and upload scenario, the answer is no. You cannot be testing V2 along with V1. You brought all of V1 down, you're now bringing all of V2 back up. With the rolling upgrade, um, you can you can have them both in the cluster, but because of this versioning thing that I'm going to talk a little bit about later, you're really not, you just have to be backward compatibility, right? V2 still has to be backward compatible with V1. So it can be a bit more of a challenge. With the blue-green deployment, you have this whole other cluster with V2 in it, and so you can send your test traffic to V2 uh, and keep your V1 as publicly exposed to your customers. Uh, lastly is this protocol and schema change information, which I have a lot more to say uh, starting on the next slide. Um, but if you want to make changes on how these services communicate with each other, then, and you want to ch change that protocol, well, if you, as I mentioned, you might have V2 and V1 running in the same cluster together. You can have your V2 services sending V2 messages to a V1 service, right? That will probably break it. So if you want to change your protocol or the schema that you use to communicate, you can do what's called, what's called a one-phase upgrade, which is great. That's what you want. That's the easiest thing to do if you do delete and upload, right? So you're bringing down all of V1, you're bringing up all of V2, so you can immediately start talking V2 to all these instances because they're all the same version. With a rolling update, you have to do these protocol and schema changes doing um, with what's called a two-phase upgrade. And that's much more complicated to get right, and I'll talk about what's involved with that momentarily. And then with a blue-green deployment, that is a one-phase upgrade where I have this new cluster and they can all talk, all the V2 instances can talk V2 to each other, but the V1 instances can't talk V2 and, and so on uh, back and forth. Right, V1 has to talk all V1, V2 ha can talk all V2, but they can't talk back and forth to each other. Um, and of course, as I say here at the bottom, when you are updating services within your cluster, you can perform some of the updates one way, like I can do a rolling update today, and then tomorrow I can decide I want to do a, a blue-green deployment instead. And then the day after, I can go back to a rolling upgrade, or, I mean, you could always do delete and upload, but delete and uploads means there's downtime, and usually people hate downtime. So delete and upload is really great for testing, internal usage. If you don't have any customers with SLA agreements, you know, it, it's cheap, it's easy, but there's a lot of scenarios where delete and upload doesn't work. You know, you have to be willing to accept downtime to your service. The other ones can work without any downtime. Uh, okay, anyway, that's the introduction to this, and then we will next start talking about how to do this two-phase rolling update if you're making protocol and schema changes.